for the sake of time, we'll go ahead and get started. I will call this meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I want to first mention that there is interpretation, Spanish-English interpretation, um, down at the bottom. If anybody needs it, uh, please click on the link at the bottom, uh, English to Spanish. So. Um, Make sure you click on that if you need it down at the bottom. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Jamal Williams. Um, I serve in our city as a, one of the co-chairs for the Black Leadership Kitchen Cabinet. Um, I also work at San Jose State as well. Um, it's good to see faces, pictures of faces and names. Um, we have a fairly packed agenda, um, but it's gonna involve a lot of discussion. So we'll get right into it. But before we do that, uh, we always wanna make sure that we are acknowledging the land that we sit on. So I wanna make sure that uh, we do our land, land acknowledgement um, that we, res we respectfully acknowledge that we host this meeting on the lands of the Muwek Maloney people who have stewarded this land through generations. We commit ourselves to partner <clears throat> with our indigenous sisters and brothers to celebrate and honor their legacy and our collective work for justice and in our care for these lands we benefit from today. At some point we'll talk about doing more than a land acknowledgement, but for now, that will suffice. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'll go over the agenda real fast. <clears throat> we're gonna do some short breakouts just to connect to each other, <clears throat> name, uh, <clears throat> name affiliation and what we want to see from this process. Uh, so we'll do that for about five to six minutes. And then we're going to spend the majority of the time having a discussion around uh, how we want to utilize this group to be at our utmost effectiveness. Um, we've, we've been going for a few meetings. Uh, we've heard from people uh, throughout the meetings that um, that we want to, that some people want to see uh, things done differently. And as a public group of people, a public forum of people, we, we need to, we, we, we want to make sure that we are coordinating this group and moving this group in the direction that everybody wants to go in. So <clears throat> we want to spend some time talking about that later today so that we can get our steering committee identified, um, our goals. Um, and then our direction. So I think it'll be a very fruitful discussion. Uh, and we want to use this meeting as somewhat of a reset um, uh, to the format of the structure so that everyone's voice is heard and that the approach we're using is one that is shared by all of the, uh, the, the members of the committee. So, um, so yeah, so before we get into all that, let's uh, jump into these breakout rooms really quick, introduce ourselves. I will put the, um, the prompt in the chat uh, really quickly, and then we will have you all in breakout rooms for about, about six minutes. So there we go. Um, and if we could put people in the breakout rooms, that would be, that would be awesome. Randomly assigned breakout rooms. Paul, Isaac, uh, thank you for joining. Um, we are in breakout rooms and we're talking about um, what, uh, introducing ourselves and sharing um, uh, what do we expect from each other during this process? 
All right, what's up, Pocho? Uh, yeah, good to, uh, you know, good to connect with you. Um, there was some stuff that happened last night at the, uh, at, um, at the eviction meeting, and I think um, you and I definitely need to talk. Cool. Uh, yeah. About about what? Yeah, because the um, the if, the effect and the impact that that's going to have on the community is going to affect what we're doing here. It's going to have a direct relationship to it. So um, I'm gonna I'm open for the rest of the night. I can't I can't even like think straight sometimes because of the of of what is going to happen as a result of what happened last night. So if you can give me uh, if you can give me a call, um, if you can uh, contact me somehow today okay. tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, we need to talk. Okay, cool. All right, yeah. thanks, Paul. So the topics on the agenda today are because I, I haven't had a chance to look at. We're going to be going the, the topic today. We're going to be just basically talking because we have a full committee now. We're going to be talking yeah. about process. Right. So, so oh, it's going to okay. be a little bit right. less, less substance and more process. So. so all of those, all of those subcommittees, um, the people that, cause I, I, I would meant to sign up with Darcy Green. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I just never got a chance to be able to hook up with her. And so those are already um, locked in. Um, I, I don't know. We're, we're still forming them right now. So oh, you're still forming. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. So, so welcome folks. We're in doing breakout rooms for just a few more minutes where people are introducing themselves and sharing what expectations they have of the process or, or of each other during a process. So good to see you, Molly. This is Molly. Hi, Pancho. I'm going to stay here because my brain is a little tired and this is where the, um, captions are. Good to see you, Christopher. Good to see you too, Molly. Hi, Poncho. I, I got kicked out of um, my computer had a reboot, so I'm on yeah. right now. No, thanks, Mike. It's good to see you. We're I think we're about to close the rooms in just a minute anyway.
All right. Uh, before we jump into the meeting, would like two people be willing to at least share something that they heard or was talked about in terms of what people are looking to get out of get out of the meetings? Um, if we could get like two people, that'd be that'd be good. Two is plenty. You just want to uh, this is uh, this is Paul Soto. Um, one of the things that oh came up in, in in the group I was in was uh, SB 1421. That um, really the core of what we're doing is that if SB 1421 implementation, which is already passed by law, man, two years ago, you know, and 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 Chief Mata in his in his opening address to apply for this job said, I am in full support of this. And so until we get to uh, what, what what I gathered from when I went in is that until we get to that point, really the the entire gist of it is 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 not relevant. But that's when I went into the conversation, SB 1421, that was the topic for me. But others had Appreciate much more to say because I just like dived in like about the middle of the conversation. Thank Appreciate you. Sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. One more person. Anybody? This is a uh, Trob and sorry uh, here, uh, and I was in a group with Reverend Smith, um, Professor Ameline, uh, and a few others, Vernon uh, and Catherine. And I think something that we took away from it was that um, you know community interests and policy, these things that you know communities have been working together maybe a little bit independently have to align. Uh, when we get to, when we, in this process, and I think, you know, it's a rare opportunity that we have to do so. So I think there was definitely a sense of like urgency in getting, getting those things aligned and putting some work in. Absolutely. Appreciate that, Tarab. Uh, so thank you all. Um, we're going to do some, oh, I see a hand. Yes, Jewel, go ahead. <laughs> thank you, Jamal. Um, are we kind of following that process to raise our hand or something like that when we want to speak yes um, okay. yes that, that will help okay. i just i was just looking for a quick two okay. people to, but yeah okay sure no problem so uh, there were two people that i could see in our breakout group myself and sparky um sparky harlan and two points training the community with regard to um police response, and then retraining the police. I strongly believe that in just in terms of San Jose PD, I believe that that's where um, there's, that's where the rotten tree is. I, I'm sorry, I would say rotten apple. <laughs> People kind of pass the rotten apple, the tree is rotting and I believe that training our police force is sorely needed, sorely awesome. needed. Appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you. Sure. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so thank you all again for every, everybody. We got an hour and 10 plus, hour and 10 minutes to, to make some stuff happen tonight. We're going and we're gonna make it happen. Um, I wanted to start with a little bit of background info. Uh, I think last meeting, I could tell um, there was there was a lot of energy, um, especially a lot of um, some angst and some frustration, and and I amongst with some other people thought this was a good a good moment to to kind of reset the process. And usually that happens, right? You start out with something, you dive into it, and then you're like, hold on, let's back up. A quick bit of inf information background, which I think might help people. Um, when there was the initial city process, and then a few of us kind of left that process um, uh, for reasons well documented, what happened was some of us met with the city to get this process established. And those of us who were meeting with the city um, to, to, to work to get this process established, there was a gap in between this process happening and the last one ending. And so what happened was we kind of proposed some, like a, a pl uh, some plans to the city. Uh, like, here's how we could do it. Here's how this process could look. And then what ended up happening is those proposed plans of how this could look turned into the movement forward in this group. And 
what I what some of us realized quickly <laughs> is that when we established this group, we needed to reestablish what the plan of, of and course of action was going to be. I think that was just some oversight from 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 some of us, um, well intentioned, uh, but oversight to to make sure that now we have twenty eight new voices plus uh, nine additional consulting voices, um, and that we didn't take that step back, right? So this meeting that's happening now should have happened weeks ago. Apologies, um, which is you know what I can offer, uh, but it was it was an oversight. Uh, but one that we we want to make sure that we 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 use this point moving forward to say we're here together we're we're a team we're all working towards um, the same goal how do we how do we do that effectively and so that's what the conversation is going to be um, for the for most of the meeting and we want to hear from you all to see what is it that you what is it that you all want to see this group do how do we want to do it hopefully by the end of the meeting we can identify um, a steering committee or come very close to it uh, and, and see where we get. Um, so I want to just throw out the question um, in the vein of how are people feeling, but what are what are people's thoughts about where we what's transpired and what they want to see moving forward? So this is this is going to be our discussion about the about the public safety um, group and the process. And so people can raise their hand and we can just, we can just go with it um, as we start to, to formulate this. So, yeah, go ahead, Paul, you have your hand up and then Terrell. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, Jamal. And thank you for that uh, correction. Um, we can just move on from that, that's, that's gone. The, the, the purpose as to why I'm here is important. There is a history of there is a history and a documented history of the police abusing their power right. and being used as a means of social control to protect the capitalist white interest in the city. Okay. That, uh, so how do we use court. this? How do we use this? What do you want to see from this group to address that? Okay, number one, SB 1421. I want that implemented immediately. SB 1421. Number two, I would like uh, Lori Valdez and another participant. They're to participate in the beginning of the police academies. There's three academies per year. I want them giving their testimonies at the beginning. Why? Right. It sensitizes them. It sensitizes the right. police force to the ultimate responsibility that, they're, that we lay on them, which is the ability to take a human life if they are threatened or the community right. is threatened. That's number one. Number two, uh, bottles. Anytime a police officer gets into a uh, confrontation with a serious body injury or a death, he's bottled immediately. Sure. Or but no, so, no, no bottle, blood. Right, for sure. So, and Paul, I think you're talking about outcomes, outcomes from the group, which we need those. But we're not we're not at that place yet because we still have to think about how do we operate as a group? How do we how do we get ourselves to those outcomes? So that's I don't I don't know nothing about that, Jamal. And I, sure. I just like, like you to know, I don't want to know anything about that. For sure. I don't care I about the process. I don't right. care about anything. I care about results. Right. Okay, because right. you know what? Right. You know the best ideas, the best ideas in the world, they find their death in committees. Sure. They find sure. their deaths in that. committees. Okay, like. so that's where I'm at. SB 1421, Lori at the police academies, not only at the beginning, but also yeah. at the end. Yeah. And so I think those are I think those are two those are two outcomes that when we start to put those together, like those those can be those can be um, uh, voted on as, as recommendations. So appreciate that. Paul. I, I, I think I'm, I consider them absolutes. I sure. consider them if, if, if the group is in line with something like that, then I, I guess I'm a part of the wrong group. Yeah, we might be. We just gotta. We just gotta. We just gotta get get there. But I I appreciate that, Paul. Thank you. Um, uh, Tarab, go ahead. Thank you, I, Julie Jamal. Sorry, do you mind repeating the question once more? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to get uh, feedback on how people have been have felt about the the uh, where we were and what people want to see moving forward. So where we're going. Um, I think moving, moving forward is what I'm looking at, you know, what we've done in the past. I think, you know, we're steering, we're trying to get in the right direction. So I'm more concerned with what we're doing moving forward. And I think uh, what's important for me is a framework that we kind of, once we figure out the steering committee and stuff, the next thing we look for afterward is to figuring out a framework um, for us to start building these recommendations. And so, you know, 
is the framework for uh, constructing the recommendations and then also just like a physical structure for how we write them out. So I think figuring that out next is important. Appreciate that. Thank you. Go ahead, Sandra. Thanks. Yeah, I think we, and I don't know if it's um, for the larger group to discuss or the steering committee to discuss, but I think we should figure out what work gets done in the subcommittee and subcommittees and then what um, we use these group meetings for. Um, I think we need to make sure everyone understands the Brown Act and that what our responsibilities are to ensuring we're following that um, and formatting our meetings so that um, to me, meetings are can either be informational or they can be to get work done and share, share uh, and collaborate. And I think we need to figure out what time we spend for those activities in which spaces. Yeah, and have some balance, have some balance between the informational and the working. Yeah. yeah. Tamara, go ahead. I agree with the um, sentiments about making sure that we know have a structure, uh, specifically an establishment of the steering committee for us to know these are our point people or our chairs um, for leading uh, the space. And thank you, Jamal, for leading the space today. Uh, you know, definitely having that democratic uh, choice of, for all of us, but also the rotational leadership. In addition, making sure that the subcommittees that we've uh, already talked about and some of us have joined are um, deciding amongst themselves what uh, who's going to be kind of the spokesperson to to speak for for that committee at the on the steering committee, um, and you know making sure that things are getting transferred the information in case someone can't make one versus the other. And I think it's important for all of us to know when each meeting is happening so we can all participate if need be because these are all public meetings. Like Sandra said, I really think it's important for everyone to understand the specifications of the Brown Act and Robert's Rules of Order, if that's something that we're expected to follow. And I'm, you know, this is my first time uh, as part of a committee for a city. And I just wanna make sure that we are including everyone's voice. So thank you, Paul, for sharing. And I think, you know, everyone should be taking note. Like he is a member of the community and um, he has a lot of experience um, specifically and everything that we're going to be talking about over the next few months. And so we definitely need to be listening to him and making sure that we're following through on those things. Um, and um, so, yeah, if we if we could get a steering committee, if we, you know, in our respective other committee subcommittees, we can get some people nominated and yeah. come back next week. Um, decide, you know, voting on that um, yeah. we, or sorry, two weeks from now voting on that, that I think that would be helpful in, in the leadership. In addition to that, what is our operational budget? I, you know, if we have one, I would like to know. I think, you know, this is a, a city committee. Things like that should be um, on public record. We should all be aware of, of what that is and what that looks like and what's the process of getting things funded. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara, for all of that. Um, and we'll I'm gonna come back to some of these too. I just wanna make sure we get everybody. And it's a lot of questions in the chat. Um, if, if, if people have answers, I don't know who, I can't navigate the chat and the, and the discussion. So if, if people um, who are familiar can answer some of the questions, that would be, that'd be awesome. Uh, go ahead, Sunny. Um, so I'm a Presbyterian pastor, um, and like Presbyterians are known for their love of polity, a very clear structure of committees and what they do and blah, blah, blah. And I totally hear you, Paul, that Robert's rules are definitely a white supremacist system. They can be used to exclude, and um, they can also be used to provide voice for all people um, and to come to some kind of decision, though it may not always be consensus. Um, so Robert's rules are one option. There is consensus um, voting too that really does have that it forces the entire committee to re to reach a unanimous vote on anything that we um, would recommend, which is certainly something to consider. And I think something that we do need to talk about um, in particular is how we want to build. Um, 
how we want to come to decisions. I also just want to echo the importance of getting the steering committee um, together and um, and having. Um, so the thing that I really wanted to say was that in the drive in the drive um, folder, we added a folder for the um, alternatives to policing, and in it we are posting all of our minutes for every single meeting. Um, and so that's something that I think that all the other committees, including the steering committee, should be doing so that the entire you know every one it has access to those minutes and understands what's happening in those committees um, and that's a place where we can put resources and um, you know research that we've been doing um, and then the big question I have is once we make any decisions like where does that go I have I don't even know what the Brown Act is so like yes I need to, I, I like I think a really in-depth discussion of that but I mean also like once we've made any kind of decisions as a committee what happens I mean who's gonna vote on them what's the power mapping look like are we power mapping is that our responsibility um, all of those questions Absolutely. Uh, so, all good. All good questions. Go ahead, whoever's talking. Okay. Um, just so everybody knows, um, as a city committee in the state of California, we don't use um, Robert's Rules of Order. We use Rosenberg's Rule of Order, which is a lot more simplified than than that. It is. We are required to do minutes. Somebody asked what the Brown Act is. It's an anti collusion act that is in the state of California that says the majority of people. So if we have five people on a committee, three people can't talk to each other and collude together uh -huh. to um, rig the vote of a committee. So if you have a steering committee of five, the most people that can talk about an issue outside of a meeting is two people. If you have a committee of seven, it's four. You cannot have a majority do it. I would say this. What is the total number of bodies and representatives all from the community that are that are officially involved as voting members? Twenty-eight. Um, can we do twenty-five? Twenty-five percent of that, or twenty percent of that, to be the steering committee? We can. We can. We we can choose how uh, we want to decide the steering committee. Yeah, absolutely. So, like doing a steering committee of five or seven or something or some number in that range, and then we do floor nominations on it. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can do that. Uh, we can do that this meeting if, if that's if that's what people want to do. I just wanted to make sure that we that we had. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that we had a, a, a discussion around how we wanted to proceed before. I didn't want to make that decision. Is all I'm saying. So yeah. Um, absolutely. Anybody wanna, did you have anything else, uh, Reverend? I'm sorry. Any, 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 any thoughts? I, I look, full disclosure, I'm a processor. I'm a, I'm a therapist by trade. This is just how I do things. So I'm, I'm all for giving people space to share before we jump right into work. Um, y'all have probably been in meetings where they talk way too much. Y'all probably also been in groups where all you do is do a bunch of work and then you realize that the dynamics are all off. So um, I wanted to make sure we could strike a balance, but we absolutely need a, a steering committee. And um, I wanna make sure we get to that, uh, get to that today. Tomorrow, please go ahead. Thanks, yeah. Um, something I forgot to mention, and I think Reverend, you reminded me a little bit when you brought up the steering committee specifics, I do think that we should have membership from our youth council on our steering committee. Um, and just pointing out that our youth council hasn't met um, since uh, they found out that there was an issue with getting their stipends. Um, so they haven't met in the last month. Um, and you know they should be a part of this conversation and if we are doing anything to have to um, decide steering committee membership right now, they would be left out of the conversation because they're not here. Well, not all of them. Um, and uh, I think, you know, maybe we should think about we're going to come back with nominations in two weeks. So therefore, the youth council can have met and decided and then have representation here as well for next meeting. I mean, and one of the questions we ask is, do we do we want to, how do we want to go about um, 
nominating for the steering committee? Like, do we, do we, do we nominate now? So people have time to discuss and then vote next meeting. Do we want to try to accomplish all that this meeting? The question, one of the questions I've heard is, what does the steering committee do, right? So like, have we set the framework for what that committee does before people just jump on it? So uh, another question. Uh, go ahead, Sparky. Yeah, I did want to leave tomorrow's <laughs> question sort of unanswered or un no response. I did want to say that I had talked to Pancho about the issue of payment um, and a bit with LaToya. LaToya and I and Angelina are supposed to connect to talk about it. We've been missing each other, but connected again tonight. And we are going to talk next week. Bill Wilson Center committed to help push the stipend money out if people didn't have nonprofits where they could do that. So I did want to say, I'm going to work with LaToya and I'm just processing, kind of like you, Jamal. I'm just trying to be the conduit to keep things moving along and to get the Youth Council back on track um, and then be able to be able to push out the checks because Bill Wilson Center knows how to do that or Venmo or Chime or whatever. But I did want to say we're trying to resolve that and I'm trying to get with LaToya and folks to do that. For sure. For sure. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sparky. And I and I want I kind of want people to take take a step back and think about this group. Like I know it felt like there was, I know it felt like there was a, like all this stuff planned and all this stuff decided. Like take a step back from this point and think about it in the sense that like there's nothing decided and there's nothing planned. We just have a goal of an outcome. We have some subcommittees that we form, and we have a goal of an outcome of creating recommendations to the city, right? So how, how do how do we how do we want to do this from from this point forward? And I and I and I and I Paul, I recognize that um, you're ready to get to work, as we all are. But we do have to answer the question like how does what does what does getting to work look like? It doesn't look like just doing a bunch of stuff, right? So that's that's kind of how I want everybody to think about it. Uh, uh, Sandra, we're gonna go in the order that I see Sandra, Jewel, uh, Reverend, Coloma, and Jim. Go ahead, Sandra. Thanks. Yeah. So um, a couple of thoughts. Um, first of all, I wanted to clarify um, again, making sure. So I think. Communication and transparency are key to our success. And I initially had been under the impression that we had a, that this committee was only authorized for a limited amount of time um, until January or February, and that we had to get all of our work done by then. Um, however, I've since been informed that that's just a check-in date with the city council and that we have perhaps have longer than that. So I think number one, in order to figure out um, a work plan and what and how we're gonna do this, we kind of need to know what our timelines are um, yeah. and everyone needs to have the same expectation of those timelines. Very good point. Pancho, do you, can you give us some clarification on, on the timeline uh, from the agreement with the city? Um, it, there was a coalition proposal that, that helped formulate this and in, in the coalition proposal, we proposed uh, that meaning a number of co-authors proposed that there would be a six month timeline, which, um, and it doesn't mean that it, it's hard and fast, the city has not said that you have to conform to this, but it is what we've proposed in terms of six months. It also allows for some flexibility with the creation of subcommittees um, that the subcommittees, if they are created and the ones that we, we propose creating have been um, police accountability, uh, police reform and accountability, prevention and promotion and alternative um, responses. Um, it gives us the, the flexibility to be, um, to actually make these as ad hoc committees so they do not have to be subjected to the same um, public noticing Brown Act kind of requirements that gives us some flexibility around that. So the six months had a rhyme or reason to it. It gives us flexibility in terms of being able to do things with more flexibility than we have right now. But we, we don't have to follow that. 
Anything else, Sandra? Um, yeah, and then the other thing I was thinking in terms of all the questions about the money that has been allocated to support this committee is um, having a separate budget committee or part of the steer steering committee, like who's gonna approve? You know, How are we gonna request funds? Who's approving that spending or tracking that spending? And what's the process for that? Because you know, we're trying to do outreach to our communities and for the disability community, in order to have interpreters and things, you know, we we would appreciate having funds to support that. But um, it hasn't been easy or clear on that process. How who's approving it? How's it? How it's approved, etc. So that it's fair and equitable to everyone. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, Joel, go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Jamal. So um, just as an introduction, this is my first time of joining this committee. Pancho invited, invited us to join at one of our commissioner meetings. So just as a point of introduction, I'm commissioner for District 5 in San Jose. I also work with Aruba and also Vecinos Activos. So I completely agree with some of the comments that Sandra had made with regard to formulating, um, formulating the body, uh, formulating the work plan, the intended outcome, the timeline and so forth. I think that's very critical to moving forward to, for a committee to be successful in moving forward. The other thing that I wanted to say, just as a side note, we all bring our own passion into this committee. I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful that there are not a lot of digs and targets being done in the chat, because that's not why I come here. Um, I work with three other committees, anywhere from 15 to 20 people per group. We all bring our passions to those committees also. We are respectful and don't target other people's opinions. Opinions are needed. That's how we move forward. That's how we formulate the direction that we should go in. So I just wanted to add that. I don't want to be a part of a committee where that runs the day. So thanks very much. Hi, this, hi Jamal, this is Lori Valdez. And um, I got to say that being a part of this committee was important to me as an impacted family member, whereas the 14 families in San Jose that have been impacted, our voices have always been silenced. Anytime we've tried to um, bring to our community to listen or our city leaders, we're always silenced or we're not allowed to uh, be part of these com certain committees, right? And I know for a fact, because I've applied to be on certain committees, the minute they see my name, they dismiss me. So the fact that I was nominated is a plus for me because now I'm going to be a voice for all the families. And that needs to be what guides us, okay? Or the one, if you're not impacted directly, if you've never lost a loved one, if you've never been abused by the police, if you don't know what we're, what, how, our, how we walk in our shoes every day for eight, almost eight years. I've been living a hell. I've been living a life unfamiliar to me. And it's hard to try to be positive and be having your voice silenced over and over again. Please, everybody on this committee, if you truly want to make a change, you have to let the voices of those be at the forefront of all these decision makings. Other than that, it's going to be useless because our, we know what it's going to take because our lives have been impacted and we are trying to save anybody else in our community from being affected like we have. None of you want to walk in our, our shoes, guaranteed. And I don't wish it on anybody, but we need to focus. This has been too long for a lot of our families to be living like this to have to be living with not being heard, for not nobody wanting to listen to 
what changes really need to be made. And they're not changes that are going to, that the police have to get offended by. They're honest and common sense, reasonable changes that if the police have nothing that they feel they do nothing wrong, then they should have no problem agreeing to what the families have requested. We've sent a letter um, of our first hundred day demand of what we wanted from Chief Mata. And, um, you know, we'd like to see some of that. I don't know if all of you have ever, you know, heard, seen, know the family stories, but we need to focus. This is about changing so we don't live and we don't see what happened after the George Floyd, okay? When that happened, all of our families were triggered. We live with this trauma forever. And until we make change, we're gonna live with it forever and our kids will. There's 10 kids locally that have lost a father because of the police in our community. And where is our community members trying to help these kids with their trauma? Nobody has. Nobody in my community has ever helped them. I've been trying to help them. I've been doing a Christmas event for them. So when everybody says we want to move forward, you need to be honest, please, and say how many times, how many family stories in your community do you know that family stories are ever reached out to that family to offer help? Diana Showman, she was a mental health person. Anthony Nunes was a mental health crisis. Do you guys know their names? And that's where we need to focus. We need to know that they need retraining. They need to hear. They need to be desensitized from that pattern of violent pattern of behavior that they're trained in. They, are, they need to be desensitized from that and they need to be resensitized to be um, protectors, not warriors that they're out there in war with us. And that's the problem. Nobody's listening and we need to listen. Please, you guys, I'm begging you because if not, I've done eight years of my life giving to try to make a difference. And the SB 1421 was one of the laws that we got. And that was the only reason I got a video released of Antonio's murder. Still to this day, two years later, 1421, San Jose PD has not given me everything I'm entitled to. So it doesn't matter how many laws, if the police aren't going to abide by the same rule of law that we all have to abide by, then what does that tell you? They have to abide by the laws. They can't just want to enforce them if they can't abide by them. And that's where we need to focus is making sure that the voices of those impacted are at the forefront, like it or not. Our voices need to be heard. Please right. understand that. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Appreciate that. And you're absolutely right. I, I want to take these last two comments because one of the things I hear echoing from a lot of people, especially Laurie, is you know the the um, the desire to 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 get to get moving on some stuff. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it up and get us get us shifted in a in a in a direction and make some decisions. Uh, Darcy, you had your hand up. I don't know if you took it down, but Jim, go next. And if you wanted to say something, you can say something after Jim, Darcy. Uh, Thank you, Jamal. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, thank you for those comments. Uh, I'd like to just maybe back up a little bit to what Tamara was saying and what it has been alluded to regarding that we do have a, a somewhat of a work plan that Poncho has put together. We have three subcommittees and or ad hoc committees that have been uh, meeting. And uh, if you could maybe just review those three ad hoc committees and or subcommittees titles and those descriptions Pancho did you know briefly uh and what i think we discussed in one of our first committee meetings was that we would have a representative from that subcommittee on the steering committee and i think that's a good way to go because that uh, subcommittee member does have input into the steering committee and making up the agenda and in the direction we want to go and uh you know i just I'd like to thank everyone for their comments and uh, to being open. I really do appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you for that, Jim. And yeah, I, I in my mind, it, it makes sense definitely for the each subcommittee to have a representative. Um, uh, Reverend talked about like 25%, so like a seven, eight person. I think we need to make some decisions here. Um, Pancho did put together a plan, and I think that. And it wasn't just Pancho. There were, there were, there was. I, I want to make sure it wasn't just like Pancho had his plan and made it happen. Like there was, again, when we did the work, the few of us that were doing the work in the to 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 move this along, we didn't take a step back. And I think 
the danger of going along forward with, with the plan that Pancho set is that it doesn't give voice to everybody here to say they want something different, which is why we're going to do that. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna stop. <laughs> the, we're gonna stop that plan because I think we saw people echoing they wanted to see something different. I think that's fair. That's fair, right? You know, six of us, seven of us were in a room trying to get this process going, but that doesn't include the you know the 20, 28 voices that are in in this space that are voting members that were that were um, asked to be on this committee from their you know groups, their organizations. So we got to shift, and so we 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 do got to take a step back, but we can make some decisions here. So let's go with Angelica and Darcy, and then we're gonna then we're gonna just put a pause in the in the comments for a second if y'all are okay with that. Go ahead, Angelica. Thanks, Jamal, and good evening, everyone. I, to Lori, I appreciate your comments. Thank you for, for, for saying those, you know, sharing your story. And I'm so sorry for the pain. And, and I know that we're all, we're all at this table because we care deeply and want more or less the same things. And I'm representing Lead Filipino. I do want to bring back the conversation around, I think Tam Tamara said it, the importance of engaging our youth and making sure that we are also creating space for them to, to join in these sessions. Because in the last couple of meetings I've attended in this space, we, it has been a resounding theme, at least for me, in terms of this questioning around where, where, are, where are our youth advisors? Because Lead Filipino also has a member of our uh, youth organizing team that is on that youth advisory segment. And it is a glaring gap right now, at least from where I sit. And we are working directly with the family of Angelo Quinto, which was a, a gentleman that lost his life in the city of Antioch, granted, but through a need and neck hold, which then spurred a bunch of state level um, advocacy campaigns that we've been involved supporting um, the Miles Hall family, working with Debug, and specifically around AB 490, which was to ban need and neck holds. But to answer this question and to just share my two cents, I think that this, this committee, and, and the fervor that we feel and the angst that we have and the emotions that we're holding, we need a little bit of structure. We need to know, at least for me and the meetings I've been a part of, I was with y'all in April when we tore apart the first reimagining public safety uh, committee and here we are in the next iteration. I think that we have these subcommittees, we've laid down some tracks, but we need to know in six months, who are we presenting our recommendations to? What is our first stop? Are we going to this equity roundtable? How does this equity roundtable play in this equation around reimagining public safety? Is it known by everyone that these recommendations are then going to city council? What are the steps that we're following? If we can't even say in six months, I mean, are we trying to hit a February deadline to, to get in right when the budgeting process is starting? Are we wanting, so what is the timeline? I think for me, it's so nebulous and amorphous that I can't work in that. And it makes it hard for me to go back to my organization and our families and our youth and say, this is what we're doing, but we're not really sure like the timelines, the deadlines. I'm not saying that we need to establish community agreements tonight. We're not going to get there. But I think at the very least, what, what is the expanse of time that we're working within? What are the entities that we will be bringing our recommendations for to? Are we going to any commissions? So what, what are these... Um, what are these important deadlines and touchstones that we all need to have some knowledge of and that needs to be shared in that Google Drive because I think for us, we're all moving fast and to have a little bit of structure around concrete deadlines would help us with our organizing and how we're gonna mobilize, especially with these subcommittees and how we're all thinking about our membership in these different pieces and then stitching together recommendations. So we need to know, is it January? Is it February? Is it March? Is it whenever? So the best that we can define those answers together I think it'll really help us move cohesively in a way where we know what, what our eyes are set on with regard to, to timelines and deadlines. Thank you. Darcy, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Thank you. For Thank you, Angelica. Um, kind of along the lines of what I was going to say, I think um, you know, every time I hear Lori speak or other, other impacted folks speak, I, I'm just reminded of the urgency that we're facing um, and how we really do need to move this work along because there's, um, when we have this, this deadline coming up of lots of city processes and things, but also there are families who are really depending on us and people depending on us to do something. And so it seems as though we have an opportunity today, um, if not to appoint a steering committee, because I, I, I'm hearing the thoughts around having 
youth present for that conversation, but maybe between now and when this meeting is going to end, if we could at least decide on how we're going to appoint that steering committee and the timeline for that and just make an agreement on we're going to appoint this, we're going to nominate people appoint at our very next meeting. Um, because what I would like to see from the steering committee, whoever does serve on that, is a work plan for the term of this board and then a timeline and some other kind of nuts and bolts information that helps us to kind of see a blueprint or see a map um, for however long this timeline is, whether it's six months or something we extend out further than that. But I think if we as a group had a work plan or a map to look at, um, where we kind of knew months out or meetings were really thought through um, prior to us even encountering them, then maybe we could um, get get through some of these other conversations. So I'd like in sure. this next half hour if we can have that steering committee conversation. Yeah, absolutely. That was that was going to be my next my next time. I appreciate that, Darcy. I think I think we need to we need to identify what is the steering committee doing. And so what I would like is if people will comment on what they see the steering committee doing, then we can vote on that. And then if we can finish that in time, then we can start to identify people for the committee. Then that committee can then <clears throat> start to work on whatever we, it is we decided that need, they need to work on. Um, so, so comments about, uh, Comments about what 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 the role of the steering committee should should be. I see set the agenda for the meetings. I'm, I'm writing all this stuff down. You can put it in the chat and you can come in. Um, we'll go. Uh, Paul, see your hand. Go ahead. The established time. Uh, yeah, Go ahead, yeah. Paul. Well, I I think there needs to be at least an appreciation. I don't care about process. I don't care about your steering committee. I don't care about who's in charge of what. I honestly don't care. What I want to see is cooperation with the mandate that Chief Mata. I watched Chief Mata sit there twice. I watched three hours, so six hours of listening to cops. I'm a convict. That's abnormal. But I did it because I care. And it was obvious that Chief Mata does. And what he stated was this. I support SB 1421. Why don't we start there? He said, I need your cooperation. I can't do this by myself. Right. I need the support of the community. Since he stated SB 1421 specifically, why don't we just start there? Let's start baby steps. And I don't want all of our recommendations sent to the, sent to the council at one time. No, piecemeal. I suggest we start with financing, the, the finance SB 1421, that's a good start, okay? And because it's already state law. It's easy, dude, and let's see if they turn it down. Okay, let, let, let's, let's, let's test them. Secondly, is that uh, in terms of, let's, let's see if the police officers union is gonna have any Trump, Trump, like can throw a Trump card on any of our policies. Do they have that ability? Let's ask that question and let council answer it. Those are my things because uh, all this committee stuff. Look, look at how much time we've lost, dude. It's right. already uh, we're already 45, 50 minutes in. So I, I, uh, I, mean, I understand your angst. And I, pre I appreciate your. It, it's not angst. Your it, it, don't 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 categorize me. Don't 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 characterize what I'm what, what I'm coming with, bro. Don't do that. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't characterize your position. So don't characterize mine. You said my angst. No, I, you characterized angst. it. I think, you uh, it. I think a sense of urgency. You judged it. You, 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 you could have said nothing. Sense of urgency. You, I, I'm saying I respect well, your sense of urgency. Don't, don't care. Don't I appreciate no, it's that. Not a sense of urgency. So what, the sense of urgency came from gonna, the police chief himself. Yeah. When he stated, "It's before 1421." So, Absolutely. so don't don't do that with me, Jamal. Really, don't. My, my apologies, Paul. I'm, thank I, you. I, thank I, you. Sincerely. Apology accepted, bro. Apology. No problem. Uh, Tarab, your turn. Uh, I think it also should be the steering committee's uh, responsibility to take in, you know. Right, you know, kind of raw ideas for for recommendations that are presented during large meetings like this, and this, and they should be responsible for uh, you know designating that idea to the appropriate subcommittee, um, and there should be some kind of documentation that you know in the meeting notes like oh we considered this idea and it was sent to this committee so that ideas aren't lost. Absolutely, spending idea. All right. Other ideas for the steering committee. I see. Hold on, wait. Let me. Jim in the chat. Receive reports from subcommittees. Compile ideas and suggestions. Um, 
Okay. All right. I'm, can I? I'm Oh, sorry. Wait, wait, can I ask a, can I ask a quick question about what Paul said? Can we send recommendations piecemeal like that? Like, could we know. vote tonight? Okay, because that's something I I, I, I continue to be wondering about. And I don't know if maybe that's the steering committee's job to really research this and like like what power do we actually have? That's still really unclear to me. Absolutely. Um, if anyone has any insight on that, please share now. If not. What we'll have to do is once we get the steering committee, we'll have to talk about having all of our, uh, our, our um, having some of the people from the city kind of direct on how, how I think Rob mentioned this, how, how are we supposed to send the recommendations um, and what, what does that look like? So we'll, we'll table that for now uh, and move forward. Lavere, go ahead. Uh, so Sammy pretty much said what I was going to say, and I'm thinking maybe some sort of research um, that the steering committee comes back with on some items. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, so the Charter Review Commission, they met um, on Monday and they had a presentation. And one thing that really stood out to me as, you know, as Oakland, they had their own like public safety oversight commission. Um, they were presented on that. And the presenter mentioned that Sonoma tried to do something similar. And as they passed through everything, it was then shot down by the police union. So I just wasn't sure if that's something that we're all aware about. Like I wouldn't want us to come up with something that gets shot down by the police union. So sort of like coming back with like research like that, if we need to do like extra steps yeah. um, before like we, we made recommendations and stuff like that. Yeah, and that's the point of our, our expert, our non-voting um, consultant members for us to have, when we come back to those meetings, um, Right, we can we can consult with uh, the lawyers on the call, the educators, the 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 independent police auditors. That's that is the uh, that is why we we have them as part of the part of the group. And like uh, Dr. Armelin said, we have the ability to report directly to the city council um, without without filter. So that was that was what we agreed on. Okay, so we can report to city council. Um, without being censored, but what power do we have to make sure that the city council is going to listen to what work we've done and that the police unions, yeah. like always, are going to come and defeat or the city manager is going to just take out what they don't feel comfortable with because it's the right thing to do. And we, we're back to a watered down process of implementing stuff that's not going to work. That is a good question. I mean, this is this is this is going to be where some of the additional work comes in after we um, create the create the recommendations, right? How do we how do we mobilize to make sure that our recommendations turn into policy? We we don't have the power to make the recommendations be policy. That is what that is why when we have a city council, but. Um, the hope is that as we formulate our recommendations, again, with the, with the consultation of the, of the experts we have, that we have, we have recommendations that, we, that, that, that can be easily implemented, um, that, that are understandable from all different aspects of community. There's gonna be some work on our end to gather, gather and garner public support for those recommendations once we have them. So that again, that looks like us mobilizing community um, in ways that you mobilize community to build policy. Um, but but our, our first task, our first task is to build a set of recommendations, right? So, um, and then within that, we can, we can talk about strategy on how we mobilize to get those recommendations passed. Uh, we're gonna go with two more minutes with this, then we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make, we're gonna vote. On something. I don't know. I know, I know there's policy around voting. Poncho, Chris, you can help me with that, but we need to make some decisions. So go ahead, Terrell. Um, would the steering committee also be responsible if the committee, so if the committee at large votes uh, on a motion to request data from SJPD or the Behavioral Health Services Department, for example, would the steering committee be responsible for acting out that request and contacting that city agency to request that data? It can. 
because somebody would have to, for example, we were asked, you know, like three meetings ago to request for data sets. Um, and so that wasn't put into a motion, but there was a request made and we don't have a steering committee yet, so nothing's really been done on that. So I'm wondering if that's something that the steering committee can be responsible for to yes. at least oversee it and make sure it's done. Why not? Um, can I say something? Okay, so when the 1421 came out, um, Silicon Valley Diva did do a general 1421 request on San Jose PD officers. And we got that information um, that two years ago. Now you can request that to the 1421 on the general officers um, and they should give it to you. But lately they've been giving everybody the run around saying they don't have time and stuff. So, which is, you know, I think fam if the family members requesting it, they should give it to them immediately. No, no hesitation because to not know what the heck's going on is just like pure torture and trauma uh, amongst trauma. So um, we, we could probably, I could probably get that information of what we got when we first filed the 1421 on behalf of like all the families and stuff. Um, but like I said, not all of us got everything that we requested, but we did get a general of the police department of all the officers who had misconduct in the past. So we do have that. And there's quite a few officers on there. So sure. And that would be and that would be something that we can that we can we can discuss. Okay. Uh, so thank you for that, Lori. Um, all right, so this is what, what I got. This is what I got. If I missed anything, um, jump in. All right. Steering committee will establish timeline for work, set the agenda for the meetings, will um, recommend, uh, take recommendations and designate ideas um, uh, to different committees. Uh, we'll com compile the committee's ideas and suggestions and, and report out, or they can decide that to have the committees report out. Um, you know, they can decide that structure and then we'll request, request data sets from experts and from uh, you know from the city the county and so on and so forth did we miss anything yes I there's a point jim carter made the steering committee would be the point of contact uh, yes. for this committee body thank you point of contact thank you jim and, and thank you jewel for that sure no problem um jamal i'm not sure if you said this but i thought there was also mention of a timeline and plan of action I did say timeline. Oh, okay. I said set the agenda, but um, I'll add plan of action, create plan of action. All right. And with that, uh, as you know, people may know, right, all this stuff they bring back to the larger group and we vote on. Uh, to Rob, go ahead and then we're gonna. I was just gonna ask if I can put forth a motion for this. Please, please. All right, so I'm sorry if I get this wrong. I haven't put in a motion in a while. Um, I move to uh, include everything that Jamal has just mentioned uh, as roles for the steering committee. Uh, and anything that isn't mentioned now will be voted on by the committee later. Anybody second that? I second, I second it. Awesome. I got seconds and thirds. All right, so here's what we're going to do everybody's going to look at reactions, and everybody. Uh, all the eyes click the raise hand feature because then that keeps your hand up longer. Uh, so all in favor, raise their hand. I get to vote too. I raise my hand. Hey, Jamal, do we need to do, this is Sandra, do we need to do a roll call vote so that we ensure that just the voting members of the committee are the ones voting? Yeah, that would, that would, that, in normal times, that would make sense, but I'm actually just going through the uh, the roster, so okay. we're going we're going to do that. Um, Mars, real way I can support. Uh, uh, yes, you can you can go through the roster and help me. You can go through the see. All right. Like for instance, I see Chief Mata's hand up, although he's not a voting member in this body. Um, uh, but that's okay. That was good. Yeah, this is this is the first time we've done this, so I expect this. Stuff. Somebody needs to go on the way to my letter. Here we go. All right. Let's count. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I expect people to be able to go. All right. Let's count. Let's count. Okay. I have 19, uh, 19 hands raised, 20, 
20 hands raised. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we can lower those. All those opposed. Uh, make sure you lower your hands if you uh, if you didn't already. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what we were voting for, and my phone um, went on mute. Oh, we were. Uh, so I read off all of the. I read off all of the. Um, all of the responsibilities for the steering committee. Um, it was create a plan of action, establish timeline, set the agenda, uh, compile ideas and suggestions, and report out. Uh, request data sets, be the point of contact for the body, and disseminate and designate ideas to the committees. Um, and we okay, were asking who all was in favor. Okay. So that's, that's 20, it was 21. All those, uh, all the, oops, I got to lower my hand. Thank you. I also agree. Sorry, my, my, my hand's not raising correctly. That's okay. That's okay. Um, so that was 20, 23 in favor. Uh, Darcy, are you, uh, your hand's still up. Um, anyone who objects or opposes, please raise their hand. One, Mika. Okay, well, um, I don't know if we, we let people speak up. I don't know. All right, uh, we'll come back to, we'll, we'll come back, if anybody, we'll come back to that. Uh, put your hand down, Mika, we got you, one, one opposed. Anybody abstaining? All right. All right, cool. So this is our, this is our, our work plan for the, um, the steering committee. Um, does anybody have any, any comments they wanted to share? I see Sammy's hand. Yeah, I just wanted to, um, in case people didn't hear it, part of the motion, the actual motion from Tarab was any other, any additional responsibilities to be voted on at another time. So I just wanted to make sure that was captured in the minutes um, that we do, leave, we are leaving that open in the future that should some other things come up that we can vote on that. Um, that was, I wanted to make that clarification. And then I also wanted to make a motion. Um, I wanted to nominate Lori Valdez as a member of the steering committee. I see. Before, uh, I, don't know if I, I wanted to, right before we do that, Sammy, uh, uh, I wanted to, um, Mika has his hand up. I want to take that comment and uh, we'll go to that and then we'll come right back to what you said. Hey, thank you so much. Go ahead, Mika. What's up, everybody? This is Mika Shamara. I'm not sure I've met everybody, but um, those of you who know me know I've been very closely involved in all of the, uh, the formation of this, this second round. Um, I objected. I wanted to make it clear that the reason I objected is because the group just decided that the steering committee needs to come back to the full group for approval to... Um, to expand its roles and responsibilities. And I, I see that as a real uh, inefficient uh, encumbrance to getting things done. This conversation has, has been um, kind of really centered around like, what can we do? And what are the, um, the, the boundary? I think, I think a lot of the, what I'm hearing, and maybe, maybe I'm um, reading it wrong, but a lot of what I'm hearing is what are the boundaries um, of our powers and what are the limitations? And I just want to make clear, you know, the, the, the work that we did, the thrust of our advocacy was for this group to be community led and to be autonomous and have a direct line to the city council to have open communication with the city council. And so um, I support us having as much flexibility to be authentic, to be communicative, um, to work uh, easily and quickly. Uh, and so that's why I objected. Um, and also I wanted to send that message so that hopefully everyone feels empowered um, at the, at, at, you know, from the work that we did uh, to speak up, uh, to be assertive about what you want included and to know that the whole goal of putting this group back together was to be able to speak directly to the council. Now, whether they'll follow the recommendations of this group or adopt the policy recommendations of this group that's a that's a separate question that relates to organizing and and um, and um, advocacy. But the the opportunity we have here 
is to uh, is to be bold and to be honest and to be authentic in what we want to communicate to the council and to the community at large um, to to improve and to expand the the dialogue uh, about police. Uh, alternatives and reform, accountability, oversight, everything. Uh, and so uh, I hope everyone is excited about that work. I certainly am. And I hope that uh, we don't put limitations on each other. And instead, we empower each other and ultimately the community and inspire some change and reform. So thank you for letting me uh, lodge that objection and, and make some comments. Appreciate that, Mika. All right, before we go to Paul's comment, I want to go back to Reverend Sammy's uh, comment um can you share it share it one more time uh yep i just a motion to nominate Lori valdez as a member of the steering committee okay appreciate that do we need a motion to begin nominations for steering committee that's probably true motion to begin nominations for steering committee i second. I second. <laughs> got a second all right for sure all right so who, 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 is, who are we nominating? We already uh, have a, one nomination for Lori. Who else? Um, I'd like to- Paul Soto as a given. That's Paul Soto as a given. I nominate her to do that and whatever else. Just she's the right point person because her life has been affected. Sure. I both? agree, right. definitely Lori for sure. I also would like to nominate Darcy. I second that nomination. I'm pretty sure nominations need a second. Yeah. I right. second that. Awesome. Jewel. I'd like to nominate, I would Boy. like to nominate Sparky. So um, Jamal, given the last comment, the earlier comment by, I think his name was Mark. Um, Mika. Mika. Is, can we, readjust the uh, steer, steering committee nomination to be, is this, is this like written in stone? Is this going to be written in stone or is this a, a formal draft for the steering committee, informal? Um, the, like I said, this is the first time that I've attended the committee meetings and my, given what Mika had pointed out, which you know I kind of agree with. If if that was your goal going forward, I'm thinking that I would abstain. I don't even know if I'm a voting member of this committee. So you are, you are. Yeah. Yeah. It it um, and Jewel. I was going to say too, Lori. I love you to death, but I'm always the person who bows out of steering committees because I feel like my voice is loud enough. I don't need to be on the steering committee. So I would basically step aside and uh, let somebody else be on it. But uh, actually my comment, um, Sparky, <laughs> was that given that I've not attended the meetings prior, it's my intention to abstain from voting. On everything? Um, pardon me? On, on for the committee or are you feeling I, I, I've been on in, other I've stuff? Been, I've been present for an hour. Yeah. So I don't have the history. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And, it's okay. And the correct information. Anyway, Jamal, that was something that I wanted to share. Right. I appreciate so that. So thank you very much. Yeah. And when and and once we identify, so so what we what I wrote down and what we took in the notes about the role of the committee is what we're using. We can readjust that with another vote. Um, right. We can as as we discussed that uh, changes can be made. Um, we're gonna go. We're going with this for now because we voted on it. So, so Jamal, just because I met Joel for the first time in a small group early on, yes. I'm wondering if we recorded the other meetings and we could maybe provide a link to members who haven't been that are joining mid sort of meetings. Can we just yes, they are recorded stuff like that. I don't know where they are, but they are. Chris, recorded. you have them. <laughs> I'm looking at Chris. Yeah, give me one second. I'll, I'll, I'll so maybe, Jewel, you can connect with her separately and send that to her. Jewel, do you want that link at all? I'm sort of 
to get some background because we've had what two three meetings like four. Oh gosh anyway right. just as background so, yeah. absolutely all right uh, uh sandra and then tamara go ahead sandra thanks jamal i would like to nominate ihoma to the steering committee i mean i second that it, it's just... Sure. And I'm right. Tomorrow, go ahead. Um, I would like to nominate Kiana to the steering committee. Any seconds? Any seconds for the nomination? Second. What was that last nomination? We couldn't quite copy. Uh, Kiana, Kiana Simmons. Thank you. Darcy, go ahead. I'd like to nominate tomorrow. Any seconds? I second. Look at that. So easy. All right, we got one, two, three, four. We have five names. Uh, Jim, go ahead. Uh, I'd like to nominate Micah. Mika. Mika, I'm sorry. Mika. All good. All good. This is Sparky. Can I hold a space for the youth council? Is that allowed where it's yeah. like a, a seat to be nominated and selected by that group? Can you, did you motion? Does anybody second Mika? Oh, does everybody have second. Do, second. Yeah. second. All right, do you want to make a motion so, for that? Uh, Pardon? My motion is to do a placeholder for a representative from the youth council to the steering council. I second, I second. That. Yep. And right now we have Lori, Darcy, uh, Ihoma, Kiana, Tamara, Mika, youth. That's two, four, six, seven. Uh, Reverend Sammy, go ahead. Um, so I wanted to highlight something that uh, actually Tarab just said, that there should also be three placeholders for the subcommittee representatives. Um, that it, the depends. Subcommittees... it depends if, if these people represent the subcommittees, right, already, right? We, so they would... True. Okay. Can we, can we freeze the nominations at seven? So, but but hold on a second, be because that was the thing I was also going to say is that I don't think it has to be seven. I Chris said that it had to be, it just can't be a voting majority, which means that it could be 14 people because you would need 15 to vote. Is that correct? 15 would be a voting majority, so it could be 14 people. Um, uh, uh, Paul just asked a question in the comments about why to promote youth so much. Yeah. I can't and, say that. Oh, I'd love to answer it. Oh, go ahead, please. I think I, I think in any discussion that you start talking about laws and changes and systems, we ought to have generational diversity in the dialogue and discussion. Um, they bring different perspective, different energy, different insight. And I think it's always fair to have that diversity there. They are not on the call now for other reasons, as they talked about with the um, stipends. But for tonight, I think it's important that we hold, we hold space for them. Absolutely. I, I think it's very important that youth are being heard too, especially because my son is 12 years old now and he was you know, affected by his dad being killed when he was four and he, his voice needs to be heard. And I'm not, sure if he, I'm, I'm not sure if he's ready to speak to everybody on these calls, but his voice does need to be heard because he has a lot to say. He has a lot of trauma and stuff that he lives with every day you know like yeah. it, it's it's hard to explain like i'll go through things that he wrote and comments he made when he was little and it triggers me like to be in that kind of a mindset at such a young age his voice needs to be heard because he's been impacted and a lot of these youth they have their voices are always silenced too like you can be seen but not heard, you know, in and, the school and, systems, juvenile hall. So their right. voices are very important to be heard. Yeah, and we and and the, the youth the youth committee was a uh, was in the proposal, and it's we're we're going to push forward again. 
there's some resetting things that need to happen with that, but we, we, we need that, so. And Lori, we have a 13 year old on the youth council already. So, Absolutely. and they're gonna, they wanna do hearings to youth in the community. So I think you'll hear more for, from them soon. I wanna make sure we, I wanna make sure we, we <laughs> move because we, we still gotta get to public comment and, and, and I, but we got some hands, I'm gonna go to those. I'm gonna move this along. Kiana, go ahead. Um, just a quick question. Is the subcommittee structure up for uh, a vote as well? Because if we wanted to add more subcommittees, that would change the steering committee um, structure. So I don't know, just question. I don't know if someone can answer. Yes, everything's up for a vote. We got we, we to reconstruct this in the image that we want it to be, right? Not just what, it, what we, what we, uh, well, um, unless it was a question really quick, I guess this for Pancho. The, um, the subcommittees, those were in the, those were in the initial proposal, right? Um, nope. No, no. It, it's part of the scope of what we talked about doing. It's the scope of what we wanted to approach, but we right. like we are not. But we have to those. form. We have to form what are our ad hoc committees, right? So the answer is yes, Kiana. We can, we can, we can, um, we can make adjustments there. So before we move on with the the nominations, I guess, uh, should we discuss as a group if we want to have more than just those three committees or are people okay with the current three? So I have a motion that might resolve that issue. Okay, it is with um, So I move that each committee, each subcommittee or ad hoc committee sends one uh, representative to the steering committee. I feel like that's happened though already with the names that have been identified. One, this, the committee, so the subcommittee has one representative that is sent to the steering committee. It's not a steering committee member who is also on the committee. There's one specific member elected by the subcommittee to be representing their subcommittee to the steering committee. Not just that one person happens to be on both, and so we'll do the representation. Got it. So, so a specific person. I can attest from the accountability oversight committee. Like the names on here are the the two people that we wanted to be on the steering committee. Like we already we discussed at our meeting. So right, right, Jamal. Yeah. So so I we could go back or we can create additional spots. Right now we have eight, two, four, so we have seven. So we can, we can identify and say um, that, you know, we're gonna hold two more spots for the other two committees, but to, to Kiana's point, if we alter the committees at all, um, then, then, then we may have some issue there. What might be good is to maybe leave, set the number that we want, leave a couple open spots and then we can, we can revisit that. That that that's another way to do it. Mika, can I, can I make ahead. a motion for the floor? Yes. Yeah, yes. Go ahead. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion on the floor that the steering committee be set at seven. Any seconds? A second. Uh, so that would be six six plus six plus a youth spot. And Jamal, I think that um. That requires a, a opportunity for discussion on that before we go on to, to absolutely, vote. absolutely. Any comments, uh, Mika? Are you trying to comment on this? No, I was going to submit two recommendations or two nominations. Excuse me. For sure. Okay. Well, can we? Yeah. Can we do? Uh, I know this. This is where it gets really confusing. But can you lower your hand if you're not going to do discussion on this point, and then we can come back to what you or um, initially want to have a discussion on. Thank you so much. That'll, that'll help with our process. Thanks. Go ahead, Darcy. How many people are currently nominated? Six plus the youth spot. That's the, those are the number, that's the number of names we have right now. Um, and what's, so I just recap, what's, a, what's allowed? I know what we're, we're capping it at, but what's, what would be allowed, Chris? 13 we'll or 14. Yeah, what will be allowed, from my understanding, is 14 or less. I don't know if Peter 
Um, Hamilton, if you are close by, if you can confirm that, my understanding is uh, 14. Um, uh, yes, can you see me? Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Peter Hamilton. I'm uh, an assistant to the city manager in the city manager's office, and I've been helping try to co coordinate some of the, the details on this. So I, I have talked with our attorney's office, and as Poncho said, uh, this committee does have the ability to appoint under the Brown Act to appoint ad hoc committees, um, uh, such as the steering committee. Uh, there are a few rules. Uh, one is that you have to have uh, each uh, ad hoc committee um, has to have uh, less than a majority of the full committee as members. So I think that's I think you're that's been stated accurately, and I think your understanding of that is correct. So as long as you're less than a, full, a majority of the full committee, uh, you're good in terms of numbers. Um, that would be that would be less. So that would be that would be thirteen people because we have twenty eight. Yeah, yeah. And, and the only other um, the thing that I'll I'll note just uh, since I'm I'm here on this um, that. Uh, ad hoc committees, they're, they're kind of a special category under the Brown Act. Uh, you, um, you don't, if you don't want to, you don't have to um, notice them or publish minutes. So you have more flexibility than you would for a meeting like this for which you have to do an agenda. Um, but uh, they, there is a requirement that they, they only, ex if you're not going to post agendas or minutes, that they only exist for six months or less. Um, so as, as, as soon as they exist for more than six months, then you have to, just like for this, um, this meeting, you have to start doing agendas and having public meetings and, and what have you. But those are really the only two rules. Other than that, you can, you know, this committee can appoint whoever you would like. So Peter, just to clarify, you, this is Sparky. Is it 28 possible members so you can do 13 or is it a majority of who's currently elected? Does it include open spots when you say majority? So open spots on this committee? Yeah, like on let's say we only had 26 now or 25. Is it a majority of the possible elected number or the absolute number we currently have? Uh, well, it's, it's, the, it's the majority of the number of people who are currently appointed to this committee. Okay. Uh, that's so it's I mean, I guess they're in the the council did establish that list of, you know, all of the organizations who appointed all of you that was established by the council back in June. Uh, so it's all of the it's a, it would be a majority of all of the folks appointed by those organizations. Okay, okay. Yeah. And the reason we were looking at, um, oh, sorry, the reason we were looking at limiting it to seven is um, what was the reason for that? Reverend Smith. Uh, Reverend Coloma made a, um, a, a motion. The, the reason I made that nomination was if you have people in the steering committee role, since it's more of an administrative committee, not a decision-making committee, um, I felt like we didn't need everybody there. It's just to steward the process, not to govern the process. If it was a governmental function, I would say let's go to 13, but since it's an administrative and interface function, I felt um, just having hands on deck to interface with the city and all of that, um, that's what makes. So that was my thinking behind it. That makes sense. I think if, it, if it's an administrative function, um, I, I want to nominate Poncho as well to the, nom to the committee. Any seconds for that? I second it. Second. I second, second it. I can withdraw wait, my motion. Wait, or, sorry. Or so yeah, a, we can't do that. We can't do that. I forgot. We have we a motion. Can, we have a motion. We withdrew his motion. Or, yeah. or we can have a friendly Or we can vote on to his, make it. What's that? Say it, <laughs> sitting in Reverend? Okay. In, in discussion by the Rosenberg um, rules, you can have a friendly amendment. So if somebody says, Let's get nine so we have a voting majority. I'll take a friendly amendment so you can get Poncho and one more person on the on the board. Okay. Are we cool with the friendly amendment to nine? This is the uh, official uh, can second. I, <laughs> can I be heard before we address the amendment? Yes. 
I want to stay consistent here and, and say that I would object to an, an unnecessarily limiting the number of persons on a steering committee. If there are persons nominated, we have to exclude from participating in a steering committee just because we arbitrarily decided to, to curtail it to a, <laughs> an arbitrary number of seven or nine or 11. Um, it's, again, unnecessarily ex exclusionary when what we're trying to do is give everybody a voice, albeit administrative, and maybe it's cumbersome, but this, that's, again, that's what we fought for. So I would encourage um, um, Reverend Smith to withdraw his motion um, so that we can uh, self-select as many or deselect as many persons as mm -hmm. um as, as we'd like to to participate on the on on the steering committee and i would also like to cue some uh rocky music and make the big nomination for jamal mm -hmm. I, would second second. <laughs> I, I, I i triple confirm jamal's nomination and i withdraw my other motion <laughs> Inside a man, but I'll, uh, we'll move on. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, uh, yeah, Jamal, asked, grab this meeting. <laughs> you know, I'm going to ask a question. Um, I thought this was just nomination, not voting. Um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't exactly know where to proceed because I don't want to. I know there, there are people who aren't here. Um, and do we, do we want to give time? Do we want to give time before the next meeting? Having a steering committee now allows us to move forward with the work, um, but I, I do uh, I do want to think about that. Okay, okay Jamal, I'm going to try to help you out here. There's no limit, but I move the slate of candidates as proposed to election. Uh, go ahead. I Reverend second Smith. it. Reverend Smith, yes. Yeah, so, um, I have my hand up. Can I speak before? I <laughs> can't. Hold on one second. We're not going. Yeah, you can speak. With ladies both. first. Ladies first. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, I just had one more um, nomination for Tarab. Second. A second. Okay. I'll I'll add them to the slate. <laughs> All right. Any other comments before? I, how many is that? Can we motion to vote? Any other comments first? All right, this is, I'm gonna read off what I have. Yeah, thank you, Chris. I have Lori, Darcy, Ihoma, Kiana, Tamara, Mika, a youth spot. For some reason, me and to Rob. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine people. Call the question. I call a question before we go to vote. Yes. We have 38 people on the phone and 28 organizations, right? Yeah, there are, 20, there are 28 um, current members of the voting members of the committee and nine uh, non-voting advisory members. Okay, so when we take the vote, I just wanna make sure that the vote is, is succinct. Like it's not like we have public and and committee members and other people voting. Yeah, absolutely. So Chris is Chris is looking over the roster with who's voting. Um, yeah. Vote. So Jamal, this, this you know it's kind of a that's a really really heavy task to like go back and forth in that short amount of time. I'm helping. Um, we're yeah, gonna do, we're, gonna, we're gonna leave the hands up for a while. I mean, what I can do is just to make sure it's one to ones. I could do a roll call. Like I could okay. just read off each there name go. and then let's do that. Just, yeah. So. Okay. Um, I want to try, from what I understand, there's only two organizations that have um, two alternate or an alternate member for, for um, you know, so people can make all the meetings, basically. So I'm going to try not to recall um, those organizations as I know them, but um, I'll begin. Um, Sparky, and then I'll, yes. you, you respond, I or nay. Okay, Sparky. Yes. Kiana. Yes. Um, what? Tamar has her hand up again. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gabriella? 
Yes. Okay. Sorry to go. This is hard. Okay. Philip Wynn. Right here. Um, Darcy Green. Yes. Rosie Chavez. Can I vote for her? Um, uh, Laura, you get your own vote. Okay, I know, but I'm since we're both from the same nominating no. piece. Cause... Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll be the vote. Thank, thank you for um, saying that. Yeah, Lori, Lori Valdez. Okay, yes. Chad B from Destination Home. Sonia Tetnowski. Adrian Kiel, or Adrian Kiel, excuse me. Or sorry, excuse me. Diego Gonzalez from the LGBT works with youth workspace. Okay. Tarab Ansari. Yes. Sandra Asher. Yes. Alicia Chavez. Paula Escobar. And Helica Cortez. Yes. Um, uh, Kiana Munoz. Ihoma. Uh, I think I think Lavier is here for Kiana from the agency. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lavier. Lavier. I think he said yes. I think he said oh. yes. Yeah, I said yes. Okay. Yes. Ihoma. Yes. Pastor Sammy. Yes. Um, Rocio. Yes. Okay. Uh, Isaac Aguilas um, Solorio. Mm, yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kiana, I think we want to call your name already. Kiana Simmons. Um, Pancho. Yes. Gabrielle Antolovich. Jamal. Jamal. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I read the names, I forgot to include. Sorry. When I read the names, I forgot to include. Mara Pelagio. Cesar Bautista. Chris, did you get Gabrielle? She came in late. Oh, she Gab said yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yes. I got it. Got it. All right, go ahead and mute again because you're you're causing some echo. Thanks. Um, Myra Pelagio. Make sure I catch Miss Cesar Bautista. Hector Sanchez Flores. And Mika Estramera. Aye. Did I vote? Did you call me? I did, um, but I think there might have been some feedback. Oh. Yeah, Jamal. <laughs> uh, I vote yes for everybody except me. Oh. I'm just kidding. Yes. Um, That's why uh, I said the slate, Jamal. You can't do that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, four more. Gabriel ha Gabriela Hahn. Beja Gonzalez. Um, and Pastor Coloma Smith. I vote yes. Poncho, I'm not seeing, and maybe this is a different list, so I apologize. I'm not seeing the four additions um, from the commission on this uh, initial spread. Also, Chris, you, you didn't call my name. Oh, sorry. This is much harder than I thought it'd be tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, Chris, this is Jim Carter. Uh, myself and Jill Buchanan represent the Neighborhoods Commission. Okay. So there's two of us for that. All right, Jim Carter. Yeah. Yes. Hi, Chris. Sorry. Sorry, Jim. Uh, Chris, this is Vernon Medicine Cloud. I'm sitting in for Sonia Tetnowski with the Indian Health Center. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, and the, how would how would you vote, Vernon? 
Bye. Okay. And then, um, Jim, the other person you mentioned. Uh, Jewel Buchanan is the other representative from the Neighborhoods Commission. Okay. And how will you vote? Jewel? Oh, I didn't know if he's stuck in the you. Yes. Yes, okay. I'll vote yes. All right. And I want to take a quick second just to tell you the votes. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18 yeses, uh, no, no no's, and no abstentions. Um, thank you so much. Um, can, can we now do roll call votes just because, especially with a public meeting, and just so that we make sure that we roll call the vote fairly? Yes, that's a good idea. And I'll, I'll promise to make it uh, more and more streamlined as the time goes on. Okay, thank you. And can I say one other thing um, before uh, point of privilege? Um, I, I just want to thank Jamal um, right now before we go any further, because he expertly and with great sensitivity to the community nature of this commission really steered us through to getting a steering committee from scratch in, in two hours. So I, I just want to give him his credit right now. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you. I'm just uh doing what I'm so led to, you know, I, I wanna see this work. We all wanna see this work and I'm, I'm just happy to be able to help usher that in. So I, pre I appreciate you for, uh, for, for the props, man. Thank you. Um, and thank everybody for their time, their patience, we're over. Um, and thank you for this work. We'll get these notes out. We got our committee. Um, I do wanna make sure for the sake of the agenda that we do a quick charter review commission update uh, from Chris and then the public comment and then we uh, adjourn the meeting. So again, thank y'all. Chris, can you go ahead and help us with that? Okay, let's see if I can find that. Um, okay, sorry, you all had all this set up. Okay, here we go. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'll put in the chat uh, a link to the agenda in minutes uh, from this last meeting. I'm just gonna do a really quick overview and share with you some key quotes that I've gleaned from the meeting, but I want to encourage everyone to um, to look at it um, because it's a matter of public record. I want to share my screen and really what I want to share, the, the independent police auditor, she did go through what it was like um, for her office pre-Measure G and then after Measure G. I just want to focus on what it is after Measure G and um, also um, point out some of the challenges that she outlined still exist for her to do her job. And um, in, in the full um, YouTube video that you'll find in the link, there, um, there are some examples of what happens in other cities as compared to our cities. So it's a really good comprehensive look at what we have versus what we could possibly do. But here are some of the things that um, the IPA can do as a result of um, Measure G. IPA may review unredacted police records related to officer-involved shootings, and use of force um, incidents. And I'm sorry, this is this is all related to police oversight, and, oversight and accountability. The IPA is an independent police auditor um, that is put in place by the city. Um, use of force incidents resulting in death or severe bodily injury without a complaint. The IPA may review and audit misconduct investigations initiated by the department against his sworn officers. The IPA may review redacted police records to make recommendations on department policies under certain conditions. And the city council may change IPA's duties without regard, without requiring a public vote. The city may need to meet and confer with the police union. And I'll just share just a few of the quotes that um, caught my attention. Again, I encourage you all to, to um, look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really, really informative. Um, but the Measure G um, allows the IPA to access 
uh, more records for review, but it has four qualifications. Um, they must be on a subject re related to a complaint that's been issued. Um, they must be directly related to a topic on a work plan submitted to council and approved by the council. Um, all the records um, shall be redacted and all recommendations made by the IPA will be reviewed by the city manager, the city attorney and the city council in closed session before they are publicly disseminated. Um, this does not include um, criminal investigations, which go to a, spe a special um, division of the uh, internal affairs. Um, uh, in, in those, in, in, in most cases, the internal affairs uh, of the police department investigates um, complaints while the IPA monitors. And if the IPA disagrees with the outcome, outcome of a complaint, it can appeal to the um, internal affairs commander, uh, secondly, to the chief of police, and then um, the highest level will be to the city manager. Um, if uh, the community um, Charter Commission wants the, the independent police auditor, auditor to have more access to records, it will require a change in the city charter. Um, and so, as I related before, there's some restrictions on what she can do. If the community wants it to be a change, it requires a change in the city charter. Um, all internal affairs um, investigations are confidential unless reviewed by judge by a judge in a closed session. Um, she did make a note that California is amongst the most restrictive in terms of um, police accountability um, and confidentiality in those in those cases in terms of them being confidential. Um, there are no automatic triggers for IPA investigations, including death. And so there's nothing that automatically triggers an IPA investigation that has to be related to a complaint. Um, IPA participates in a panel related to training um, the equipment that they use or procedure, um, but it's not like necessarily reviewing individual officers and their fitness for their position. Um, she did make the comment that, comment that redacted reports are cumbersome and that investigations of police misconduct should be conducted by people other than police themselves. And this was her opinion. Um, again, the, the, all, all the information is on there. I just gave like a really, really brief overview of some of the things that she said, but I encourage everyone to to look at the the video, um, and we'll make sure to make that available via email after this meeting. I appreciate that. Thank you for that update, Chris. Any comments? Yeah, I have one. So the way the charter works, and once again, this is the problem that the police unions always have a say, and the city manager. They need to be taken out of the equation because they're going to be the ones that are always going to put an ax in any work we do to put forward. And it's like the police union should just stick to what the unions were meant for, for in-house promotions, whatever, for them not to get involved with what happens for the city and how the city operates and how they want public safety to run. And that's what is the biggest problem, the police unions. They need to get out of the charter somehow. We need to get them out of there where they don't have so much power to defeat our purpose. You know, they're like a thorn in the side of everyone. Like they're, they're evil people. <laughs> I'm serious. They're evil because they don't, even if the police say this police chief wants to see changes made, the police unions will make it impossible for the police chief to make it because that's how evil they are. They use their whiteness to do that. And most of the police union leaders are all white. They don't represent San Jose. So I'm sorry. That's going to be a big problem. We need to change the charter to get them out or figure out a way how to get the police unions say and the city manager because the taxpayers pay his salary. And if he's always going to go against what the people want, then he needs to not have so much of a say either. We have to figure out how to take that away from them. That They have too much power to hurt our communities. Absolutely. Um, we're going to just jump into public comment and then we'll start with Paul. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, yeah. Um, look, man, in 1849, the police department was formed. Okay, the purpose for the police department forming was to facilitate the process of the decapitations of Native Americans and Mexicans. 
Okay, this is what it was for. During the Chinatown burnings, which was articulated yesterday in such a cavalier, it was disgusting what Perales did with that. Because what he didn't do is censor why this happened. They burnt down five Chinatowns. I guarantee you that the police department knew about it and didn't care. Why? Because they were not white. This entire city was the capital of California for the first two years that it became a state. Ever since then, there has been these bloodlines, okay, that have consistently maintained power and control through the police department, through the city government, and through the county government. How do I know this? Because Clyde Arbuckle's history of San Jose was centered in the county, in the county historical context record. And what that is, is the story of San Jose. This is the accepted document of what made San Jose what it is. Clyde Arbuckle was a 33rd degree Mason. I'll give you one guess as to who Thomas Fallon was, a 33rd degree Mason, connected to Masonic Lodge 10. And what they did is they covered that over with this narrative of the California pioneer. And by doing that, they completely covered up the savage brutality that has been consistent in, within this police department from 1849 until today. Okay, I don't have time to be educating people on this. I can see that I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like watching a dream happen. It feels like the Twilight Zone. So I can see that, uh, that, that my, my histories and, and the knowledge that I have is gonna be wasted. Does anybody know who Mujeres de Aslan is? Do you know who they are? Do you know why they formed? Do you know why Confederación La Raza Unida? Do you know why they were formed? Do you even know who these people are? Do you know why the Black Berets? Do you know what the history of what happened to them? Absolutely not. You have no knowledge of that. Absolutely none. My time is wasted, and I have never said that to any group, ever. And this group, my time and my experience and my knowledge and my connection to these histories is wasted straight up. And that pains me. It hurts me to be able to say that. But to this committee, I have to, because you have absolutely no clue about those histories, about what has happened to Chicanos in this city and what has happened to Mexicans and Native Americans since 1849 and the formation of that police department. I respect Chief Mata. I respect Chief Mata to the utmost. Why? Because he's the only person that I've ever seen. I was there when he got in, when he got up. I was the only person from the public that was there. I was kicked out. They heard my name and they kicked me out. I didn't get resentful. I didn't get pissed off. I just went outside and I stood there and I watched. And you know who wasn't present? Paralysis. I want to uh, know if you're gonna. I want to know if you're going to. Yeah, you cut me off anytime I want. I'm gonna keep talking. Yeah, I want I'm have Perales, to I want Perales to recuse himself. Perales right. has no. Uh, Perales must recuse himself. Absolutely, he's a cop. He announces he's a cop all the time, and you right. expect the legitimacy of any policy to be passed with Perales still voting on it? Are you serious? Let's talk about that. Thank you, Paul. We appreciate that. We're gonna move forward so we can get to the next comment. Uh, Beekman. Hi, uh, Blair Beekman here. Uh, this is my first time public comment. Uh, I've, uh, I've, I've watched your meetings on the uh, YouTube. Uh, nice, they are nicely on there. So thanks. Uh, you know, I, I've been really excited what uh, this this uh, the work and the efforts you guys have made to put this together. Uh, thank you. Um, besides uh, the city of Oakland, you know, I think uh, you know San Jose. We, we can set a real good model and example uh, for the mm -hmm. Bay Area. What we can be doing with the future of uh, reimagined issues. So uh, thanks, this is my first time here. Uh, I'm pretty inexperienced how to talk about this stuff, but I have heart and hopefully that can be a lot. Uh, so um, I, I just wanted to quickly mention, I've been attending charter meetings and uh, you know, they're looking for some direction and help from you guys, uh, you know, how to move forward with reimagine things. Um, I understand that they are, um, if we ever, if you, this committee, a commission ever comes through with a uh, 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 citizen uh, police oversight board things, that it's up to the city charter to write the language to, to be put into the city charter for the uh, ballot process, I think is what it's needed. Um, 
and I'm, I'm hoping you guys are coordinating well with that. And uh, I think we can keep the reimagine you know, process alive in the city charter. And in fact, they're starting to move on to uh, issues of Ohlone uh, land issues. And, and that could uh, introduce ideas of equity. Maybe that can be the sort of conversations uh, for subcommittee uh, things. Um, good luck in your work. And yeah, I just hope you can coordinate well with the, uh, with the Charter Commission as you guys are forming at this time and just keep in contact and good communication and uh, good luck in your efforts. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> thank you, uh, thank you. Any other, any other comments? All right, it is 8.30. We are I going move to-, to adjourn this meeting. Uh, Appreciate that. Do we even have to move to adjourn or can we just adjourn? I triple check just that. Just adjourn. You we all can a, say good night now. <laughs> we got a triple second. Uh, everybody, have a wonderful night. We'll be back in two weeks. I appreciate all the work and I, uh, thank you again. <laughs>